today's video the surprisingly heated debate on which type of water freezes faster but first there should be absolutely no debate on whether or not you use today's sponsor nordvpn to improve your internet experience the answer is yes Look, the internet's not like it used to be. It's not 1994. These days, you should be using the internet with some protection. VPNs aren't just a more modern way to use the internet. It makes it straight up better. And with NordVPN, you can rest easy knowing that your internet is safe behind a wall of next-generation encryption. Block malware, bypass annoying ads, the tracking web traffic. It's just a much more secure experience. Worried about data logs? Well, don't be. NordVPN doesn't keep any logs on your internet use because they know what you do online is absolutely none of their business. What they do give you is more than 5,000 and secure server options scattered across 59 countries so your IP can live wherever you want it to. And that access can provide you with loads of new options from shopping to streaming, just one click and you're good to go. So regardless of whether you're considering a VPN for yourself or as a gift for another internet user in your life, Nord gives you options. And right now, you guys can take advantage of a special deal that NordVPN is running. Any purchase of a two-year plan comes with a huge discount, plus an additional month for free. And if you make a purchase and decide a VPN isn't for you, NordVPN offers a totally risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. There's never been a better time to enhance your online experience with NordVPN. Head to nordvpn.com forward slash brainfood or use the code brainfood at checkout. Or there's a link below. In 1963, Erastoma Pember, a 13 year old student at Magamba Secondary School in Tanzania, made an unusual discovery. Mpemba was in cooking class making ice cream and had just boiled a mixture of milk and sugar when he realized that space in the class freezer was rapidly filling up. Not wanting to miss out on the last available tray, Mpemba placed his mixture in the freezer without first letting it cool to room temperature. When about an hour later, Mpemba checked the freezer, he discovered to his astonishment that his mixture had already frozen solid, while those of his classmates, which had been placed in the freezer at room temperature was still liquid. Intrigued, Mpemba consulted a friend, an ice cream vendor, who revealed that he always placed his ice cream mixture into the freezer hot because it froze faster that way. Some years later, as a student at Makwawa High School in Iringa, Mpemba brought up this unusual incident in physics class, only to be met with derisive laughter from his classmates. The teacher explained that such a phenomenon contradicted Newton's law of cooling and that Mpemba must have been mistaken. When Mpemba insisted that he observed the effect firsthand, the teacher responded, Well, all I can say is that is Mpemba's physics and not the universal physics. Undaunted, Mpemba decided to investigate for himself and convinced the school's kitchen staff to let him use their freezer for his experiments. His initial results seemed to indicate that the effect was indeed real, but without more sophisticated equipment, he couldn't be scientifically sure. As luck would have it, shortly thereafter, Mpemba met Dennis Osborne, a visiting lecturer from the University of Dar es Salaam, who was equally intrigued by this seemingly contradictory phenomenon. Together, Mpemba and Osborne conducted a series of controlled freezing experiments publishing their results in the journal Physics Education in 1969. Ever since, the phenomenon of hot water freezing faster than cold water has been known as the Mpemba effect. But here's the rub. Scientists can't agree whether the Mpemba effect actually exists. For despite the apparent conclusiveness of Mpemba and Osborne's experiments, no controlled scientific study has ever been able to replicate their results. On the other hand, substantial experimental and anecdotal evidence suggests that under certain circumstances, hot water can in fact freeze faster than cold water. This inexplicably contradictory body of evidence makes the Mpemba effect one of the most elusive and hotly contested phenomena in all of physics. At first glance, the Mpemba effect would appear to be impossible, for, like Mpemba's high school teacher pointed out, it violates the first law of thermodynamics and Newton's law of cooling. These state, respectively, that the total change in energy of a system equals the energy added or lost, plus the work performed on or by the system, and that an object's rate of cooling is directly proportional to the difference in temperature between it and its surroundings. Thus, two samples of water are identical except for their initial temperature, and placed in identical cooling conditions should cool at the same rate, with the colder water freezing first because it initially contains less heat for the cooling system to remove. Yet, Mpemba was far from the first to observe this phenomenon, with versions of the Mpemba effect being reported throughout history. In his treatise on meteorology, written around 350 BCE, the Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote, The fact that water has previously been warmed contributes to its freezing quickly, for so it cools sooner. Hence, many people, when they want to cool water quickly, begin by putting it in the sun. So the inhabitants of Pontus, when they encamp on the ice to fish, they cut a hole in the ice and then fish, pour warm water around their reeds that it may freeze the quicker, for they use the ice like lead to fix the reeds. In 1620, English philosopher Francis Bacon wrote in his treatise Novum Organum, 
Slightly tepid water freezes more easily than that which is utterly cold. While in 1637, French philosopher René Descartes wrote in his discourse on the method, one can see by experience that water that has been kept on a fire for a long time freezes faster than other, the reason being that those of its particles that are least able to stop bending evaporate while the water is being heated. A major faction in the confusion surrounding the Mpemba effect is the vague and non-specific manner in which it is typically phrased. For example, scientists cannot agree on the exact definition of freezing in this context, and whether it refers to the moment when the water reaches an average temperature of zero degrees Celsius, the moment ice begins to form, or the moment the sample freezes solid. Equally ambiguous is whether the effect applies to any difference in temperature between two samples or only to a specific range of temperatures. And finally, the historical examples previously listed did not specify whether the water was actually warm when cooling started or had simply been warmed at some point in the past, a distinction which completely changes the parameters of the phenomenon. Because of this ambiguity, the majority of experiments conducted on the Mpemba effect have used completely different methodologies, with few attempting to precisely replicate the methods and results of another. This has resulted in a body of data that is very difficult to compare directly, further adding to the confusion. Mpemba and Osborne's original 1969 experiment involved pouring 70 milliliters of water at various temperatures into 100 milliliter beakers and placing these in the icebox of a domestic refrigerator. They found that the time to start a freezing was the longest at an initial temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and shortest at a temperature of 90 degrees, with the relationship between temperature and freezing time following a clearly defined curve. Due to the relatively basic nature of this experimental setup, some early skeptics of the Mpemba effect attempted to explain the phenomenon as resulting from flaws in Mpemba and Osborne's methodology. For example, some have pointed out that domestic freezers use thermostats to keep the internal temperature constant and that the introduction of a hotter liquid would cause the refrigeration system to remove heat at a faster rate. However, once the hotter liquid reached the same initial temperature as the colder liquid, then the cooling curves from that point on would theoretically be the same. And since it would take more time to remove the excess heat from the hotter sample, overall it would cool more slowly than the cooler sample. Another theory centers on the formation of frost on the inside surface of the freezer cabinet, which normally insulates these samples from the freezer wall. A hot water sample would cause this frost to melt, resulting in better contact between the sample and the freezer wall, and the more efficient heat transfer via conduction. However, Osborne and Mpemba accounted for this effect by placing their samples on a sheet of styrofoam, insulating them from the freezer walls, so something else has to be going on. There has been no shortage of proposed explanations for the Mpemba effect, none of which has ever been conclusively confirmed by experiments. One of the earliest suggestions was that the hot water loses heat faster through evaporation. But while follow-on experiments by Osborne and Mpemba demonstrated that adding a layer of oil to the samples delayed the onset of freezing by several hours, later experiments controlling for evaporation revealed that this process only accounts for a small proportion of the total effect, 30% at most. Another theory championed by scientists like Jonathan Katz of Washington University in St. Louis centers on the presence of dissolved salts and gases in the water, which can potentially delay the onset of freezing. Heating water before cooling it causes these substances to be released from the solution. Thus, it is not the temperature of the water itself which matters, but the fact that it was heated sometime prior to the start of cooling. This fits with the historical accounts of the effect, such as Aristotle's, which simply state that the water had previously been warmed, and not that it was warmer at the start of the cooling. But once again, experimental evidence for this mechanism has been inconclusive. Yet another theory involves convection currents within the water. The previously mentioned evaporation theory relies on the fact that warm water is less dense than cold water, meaning that the warmer water molecules in the sample rise to the top of the container, where they can evaporate and carry away heat into the environment. However, water is a peculiar substance, and at temperatures below 4 degrees Celsius, cold water actually becomes less dense than warm water, leading to the formation of so-called cold top, an insulating layer of water that retards further heat loss and delays the onset of freezing. According to this theory, the strong convection currents present in warmer water impede the formation of the cold top, allowing heat to escape more quickly from the sample. But despite these and dozens of other theories which variously posit, for example, that microbubbles found in hot water aid with convective heat transfer and that hydrogen bonding between water molecules varies with temperature, the fact remains that the experimental data does not support the existence of the Mpemba effect at all. In a 2016 study, researchers Henry Burridge and Paul Linden compared the results of 12 freezing 
experiments, including their own, and found that with the sole exception of Mapemba and Osborne's original data, none showed any observable negative correlation between starting temperature and freezing time. Indeed, in a 2020 paper, researchers Daniel C. Elton and Peter D. Spencer dismissed the Mapemba effect as a particularly persistent example of pathological science, which they define as the science of things that aren't so, where scientists were tricked into believing a phenomenon often for years or decades until eventually it is found the purported phenomenon was actually caused by confounding factors in an experiment or faulty methods of data analysis. Other examples of now debunked pathological water science cited by the pair include polywater, a fourth phase of water supposedly discovered in the late 1960s, and water memory, the purported ability of water to retain the memory of substances dissolved in it even after those substances have been diluted out. Thus, according to Elton and Spencer, the Mapemba effect is little more than a scientific phantom scientists have been unproductively chasing for the last 50 years. However, studies have shed some light onto how this phenomenon might have come to be. In 1995, Experiments conducted by researcher David Orbach of the Max Planck Institute in Göttingen suggested that the Mapemba effect might actually result from the phenomenon of supercooling. Supercooling is the process whereby water can be cooled well below its freezing point without solidifying. In this unstable state, a slight disturbance like shaking the container or adding an impurity to create an ice nucleation site can cause the water to spontaneously freeze. Supercooling requires relatively calm water, meaning the convection currents in warmer water can serve to interrupt its Onset. Thus, warm water may appear to freeze more quickly when, in reality, the colder water had long ago dropped below its freezing point and had simply become supercooled before spontaneously freezing. This explanation may also hold true for water which has previously been heated but which is not warmer at the time cooling begins, as heating can cause certain minerals like magnesium carbonates to come out of a solution. The crystals can act as nucleation sites, preventing the onset of supercooling. Indeed, this explanation had been forwarded as early as the mid 18th century by. By Scottish physicist and chemist Joseph Black. Orbach also observed that his samples tended to freeze from the outside in, giving the illusion of being fully frozen when, in fact, the center of the sample was still liquid. This ambiguity in the observable points at which freezing occurs may account for at least some of the variability in other experimental results. Further evidence for this explanation was uncovered by Dr. James D. Brownridge of Binghamton University, New York, who in 2010 attempted to eliminate all extraneous factors present in previous experiments by placing ultra-pure samples of distilled water in sealed glass vials, suspending them by threads in a vacuum chamber, and cooling them via radiative cooling. Like Arbach, Brownridge observed that sometimes hotter samples froze faster than cooler samples, but only because the cooler samples underwent supercooling. But more importantly, Brownridge observed that this effect was entirely random and depended entirely on the specific sample vials being used. Indeed, each vial had an entirely different maximum temperature at which the water inside froze, a temperature determined by the presence of surface imperfections which acted like ice nucleation sites. Thus, one of the fundamental conditions of the Mapemba effect that hot and cold water containers must be identical is impossible to attain in real life, as different containers will inevitably have different nucleation sites and thus a different minimum freezing temperature. Thus, it appears that that Elton and Spencer are correct, and the Mapemba effect is merely a phantom born from the inherent randomness of the universe. But it appears that the British Royal Society of Chemistry had never read Arbach or Brownridge's papers, for in 2012 it organized a widely publicized competition for papers which could definitively explain the Pember effect. The winning entry, submitted by Nikola Berkovitz of the University of Zagreb in Croatia, was perhaps less definitive than hoped, attributing the effect to a vague combination of evaporation, the presence of dissolved gases, convection currents, and supercooling. Yet despite the dearth of evidence for its existence, scientists' continued fascination with the Mapemba effect should perhaps come as no surprise, for according to Elton and Spencer, liquid water, the substrate in which all known life operates, holds a privileged position in human culture and science. The idea that water is special is a bias instilled in us by thousands of years of human culture. This is undoubtedly true, but scientifically such a bias is not entirely off the mark. Water does have many anomalous properties and is special in many ways amongst liquid Liquids. Issues only occur when people latch on to the idea that water is more special than it really is and then do not properly criticize their ideas and only seek confirmation of them rather than falsification. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.